My name is Grace Kisa. I am a multidisciplinary artist. I work primarily in sculpture. Uh, I do some painting, photography, printmaking, uh, costume design, installation. The body of work that I'm uh, creating connects to the theme of connectivity, community, through sisterhood, partnership, and community. My personal connection, of course, is I am a sister. I'm a daughter. I have mothered uh, children uh, in aid to uh, mothers who weren't fully capable or needed help. I have a wonderful partner who I've been known since for about 30 years now. And then I'm part of a wonderful, vibrant sisterhood and brotherhood in this community. The narrative, again, for the work that I'm doing, uh, one piece is centered on sisterhood. So sisterhood, not just that you were born in, I have two sisters, uh, the, the larger community where sisterhood, where it came of age uh, among women of all ages. I used to braid hair when I was in art school and I braided hair from people who were three years old to people in their 80s. And so my braiding circle constituted men and women because uh, it was kind of different. My male friends would come over while I'd be doing it. It was a chance for them to sit in community with women in an intimate space. So that uh, sisterhood, it figures in my life very prominently. Um, I have my sisters in the arts, my sisters in the community, people who have shared their grandmothers with me, their aunts, their sisters, their uh, daughters. So for me, the sisterhood part is, is prominent and that's why one of my pieces is gonna be that. The other piece is on partnership. So without partnership, we don't have community. I have a wonderful uh, partner who's also an artist himself, also has helped me contribute in help raising these children that we have co-parented, that their parents had generously shared with us. We also contribute to our contributing members to our community. So whether it's boys or girls, family, we don't have a church, but our church is our community. So those are the two pieces and then the third piece is on activism when it comes to black women and activism in kind of the unconventional ways, like especially through science and technology. So a lot of times you don't hear anything about women in science and technology, but they've been, black women in particular, have been part of that uh, genre or that discipline from the beginning of time. So I do that in honor of all those women who have been erased or minimized or their work has been appropriated by men in their field. How do I want the work to resonate with an audience? I would like them to question more. So if you've been told a story about this is the way things happened in the past, that's not the whole story. If, they're, if it's all male, half the story is not being told. So just out of curiosity, just, just look, look and you'll, you'll find them so easily and in ways that you couldn't have imagined. So one of these, um, and, I've, and I've found these stories countless times when I've been questioning, okay, so where were the women when this was happening? And then you go through research and you will find them left and right. And I'm particularly where science is concerned. I think a lot of people now know about activism and how women have helped in independence movements, in civil rights movements, in social movements. But in the science and technology, a lot of it is kind of minimized. So I'm looking for the black female engineers, the African women scientists, architects, the black women who worked at NASA. So I just found out that there were black men and women who have worked contributing members in, in NASA in the space, uh, the space race. So even the intercontinental cable that went underwater from the in the Atlantic from the Americas to Africa, a black man was the one who created that. He was a NASA engineer. The woman who created or solved the sonic boom problem that they had when when you know uh, fighter jets would take off or rockets would take off, it was a black woman that solve that problem for them. And so NASA is full of stories of that, but we don't hear about them. We always hear about Neil Armstrong, Sally Ride. We might hear about one or two. Recently, people were aware that Ed Dwight would have been the first black male astronaut, but then that was, that they canceled that, that appointment, but he ended up making a contribution and his work is in every state in the United States as monuments. So he has a long lasting effect through the arts with that brilliant brain. So I'm, I'm always looking for stories like that. I'm just looking for people to be more curious. So when you hear a story, just there's always the next, ask the next question and you will find the woman or man behind that. 
So my mother, my mother and my father built a home for us where we could thrive, challenge that we were challenged by them to, to be better, be stronger, be braver, be more brilliant. So we had to study. We had to study anything and everything. And they were, because we, the life that they gave us, we got to travel and live in different societies. Now my mother was, while my father built the house, my mother was the one who sustained that home. So she seeded into us, she protected us, she defended us, she inspired us. So that was my, is my first. And then after that, I've always had women who've inspired me, encouraged me, pushed me outside of my comfort zone, given me the opportunity to grow, challenge uh, myself, challenge them in all aspects of my life. So my women friends, my sis the sisterhood is really, really important to me. I will say the word is indefatigable. And indefatigable is relentless, indomitable, enthusiastic, unflagging. That is what black women mean to me. So that word to me encompasses all of that. My first word would have been, or my first, that was my first word. And then I thought, well, that's kind of a complicated word. Let me pick something different like origin. And I was like, no, it's the first word was that. To those viewing is uh, offer gratitude. We wouldn't be here without without our mothers. Okay, the message that I would like to convey through this work to the audience, gratitude for the mothers who came before us, the mothers who became came before our own mothers, our mothers, and then the mothers in the community, the women that lead, protect, fight for our civil rights, fight for our humanity, fight for our existence. Black women are unique in the, in the most unique way, in a singular way, in that they're the origin, they're the beginning. That's where we all started. Civilizations are built on us. Yeah, we're all here because of them.